Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd Continuing on in our study of Arba'in al-Nawawi by Imam al-Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala A very important hadith which is the seventh hadith uh, the hadith of Abdullah uh, Abi Abdullah Nu'man ibn Bashir Very very important hadith and this hadith shows us the importance of the most important part of your body. And that is the heart. Because in Arabic, the heart is, one of the names of the heart is the qalb. Is the qalb. And the qalb, it means, it comes from uh, the verb, qallaba uh, yuqallibu qalb. Uh, those are some of the conjugations of that verb, how that verb changes. And it means to change. Qallaba, yuqallibu. So that means that the heart is always changing. And that's why you have to protect it. How do you protect your heart? You protect it with the Quran. You protect it by reading the Sunnah. You protect it by doing the Halal. And you protect it by staying away from the Haram. Staying away from looking at Haram. Staying away from listening to Haram. Stay away from doing haram. But it, all those things, they will affect your heart. Also, if you listen to the bad people, people who tell you a bad, uh, give you a bad image about Islam, for example, those groups that we have, we have in Somalia, a shabab. Uh, in Iraq, we have those groups, they're called ISIS or ISIL. In Nigeria, a group called Boko Haram. A lot of those people, they speak on the internet and they give a bad image about Islam because they make people think that Islam is only killing and slaughtering and killing. So they poison the heart and they can destroy you by corrupting your belief, corrupting your iman, making your iman less by following bid'ah or deviance in Islam. عن أبي عبد الله نعمان بن بشير رضي الله تعالى عنهما قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إن الحلال بين وإن الحرام بين وبينهما أمور مشتبهة لا يعلمهن كثير من الناس فمن اتقى شبهات فقد استبر لدينه وعرضه ومن وقع في شبهات وقع في الحرام كالراعي يراي حول الهمة يشك أن يرتع في Allah wa inna li kulli malakin himma. Himma. Allah wa inna himma Allah muharramuhu. Muharramuhu. Allah wa inna fil jizid mudga tanida salaha salaha jizida kullu. Wida fasida fasida jizida kullu. Allah wa hiya qalb. Ruahu Bukhari wa Muslim. In this hadith, Bukhari and Muslim. An Abdillah bin, an Abi Abdillah Nu'man bin Bashir, Ibn Bashir. Nu'man bin Bashir. He said, I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, Verily the halal is clear, and the haram is clear. So it means we know what, what is halal and haram. You know that you can't drink alcohol, for example. You know that's haram. You can't smoke weed. You know that's haram. You shouldn't listen to music. You know that's haram. You shouldn't look at bad things on the internet or on television. You know that's haram. Those are, that's clear. No one, uh, all Muslims know this. All people, even non-Muslims, they know those things have harm in them. So the Prophet ﷺ said, in the halal bayin wa inna al-haram bayin wa baynahuma amur mushtabihat la ya'lamuhunna kathir min al-nas. He said, in between that halal and between that haram, are doubtful things. They're things that we don't know if it's halal or haram. For example, some things on the internet, we don't know if it's halal, we don't know if it's haram. Using, eating certain foods, we're not sure. Is it halal or is it haram? Does it have some other uh, pork in it? Does it have some alcohol in it? Does it have this? Does this medicine have this in it? We don't know if it's halal or haram. Those are the things between halal and haram. So the Prophet ﷺ said, لا يعلمهن كثير من الناس Most of the people don't know. Who knows? The ulama. 
the scholars, because they studied these books, they studied the Quran, they studied the Sunnah of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and they know the ahkam of the religion, they know the religious rulings, they know the fatawa, they know the verdicts, they know they have, uh, some of them are ahlin for ijtihad, they can make ijtihad, they can make rulings, they know, they have knowledge. La ya'lamuhunna kathir min al-nas, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, most people don't know, many people don't know this. What is, what is between the halal and the haram. And he said, whoever, فمن, فمن and whoever stays away from the doubtful things, the shubahat, then they protect their religion and their honor. They protect their religion and their honor. How? Because if you stay away from doubtful things, things you're not sure if it's halal or haram, then that means you won't fall into that haram because you didn't do it even though you didn't know if it was halal or haram. Because you stayed away from it. That means you protected your religion because you didn't do the haram. And you protected your honor because no one can say anything bad about you. They can't say, oh, he likes to smoke this. He likes to smoke cigarettes and we're not sure if it's halal or haram. He likes to do this. She likes to do this. And we don't know if it's halal or haram. So we'll speak about her. But if you protect yourself from that, those things which we're not sure if they're halal or haram, then you protect your honor and you protect your deen. So, uh, and then the Prophet ﷺ said, وَمَنْ وَقَعَ فِي شُبَهَاتْ وَقَعَ فِي حَرَامْ And whoever does the shubahat, the doubtful things, they fall into haram. Some people now in America and other places, they say that weed, and you guys might know what weed is anyway, it's a drug. They say that it's, it's smoking weed is okay because now it's different weed and now it's medical marijuana. It's medical weed. So they say, since it, it's good for making you calm down, it helps fight cancer, it helps this disease, it helps this disease, then it must be halal. They say, it's not like the bad weed that gets you high. This is what they say. So now they've went to, at best, you could say that this is doubt. We don't know really. We know that the asl of that is haram because it, it's mukhadrat, because it changes your mind, it gets you high and changes your mind. You don't think the same when you smoke weed and you drink alcohol, you do drugs, okay? It changes your intellectual capacity. It affects you. So now they're talking about using this other weed. We don't know if it's... So the best thing for sure is to stay away from it. And then you'll protect yourself. But if you start smoking it and you say, well, it's doubtful, I'm not sure if it's halal, I'm not sure if it's haram, but I'm going to do it anyway because I enjoy it or because it helps some of my pain or whatever the case be. That means then you got into it and now people might talk about your honor. They might say, oh, so-and-so, he smokes weed. Huh. So-and-so, he does weed and he probably does other bad things. So it begins to, they'll talk about you. That affects your honor. Also, it affects your deen because if you do drugs, your salat, if you get drunk on alcohol, your salat for 40 days won't be accepted. The Prophet ﷺ said, even if you're praying it, it won't be accepted by Allah. And you still have to pray it. So it's very dangerous. So, it, so whoever falls into the shubahat, they fall into the haram because it's easy. If you do that, that it's doubtful, then it's easy to fall into the haram. Like... The one who has, for example, sheep, like today we saw the camels. And if you have your camels, you notice some of those camels, they had different marks on them or they wore a pack on their back to, to show that those are this guy's camels and not this person's camels. So that way, if they mix, you won't know whose camels are who. And if you let your camels go on somebody else's place to where the camels eat at, then you're in a dangerous situation because then you're on their land and maybe they will mix with their camels and you won't know whose camels are who. This is a rough description because the Prophet ﷺ said, it's like the one who is a sheep herder, a shepherd, and he allows for his sheep or his flock to go graze, to go eat in somebody else's uh, pasture. And then, then they will fall into it, meaning that sheep will go into somebody else's pasture. 
And that's like doing getting into the haram. If you go into the shubahat, you might fall into the haram. If you get into the doubtful things that you don't know if it's halal or haram, you might fall into the real haram. And then he he also made an example, and then he said, and verily, every king has his pasture. Everyone who's in authority, they have their own pasture, which they safeguard. And he said, and verily, Allah's pasture, or what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made sacred, that you shouldn't do, that's his him. That's his, uh, that's what Allah protects and doesn't want you to do. When he says, don't come close to zina, don't drink alcohol, don't do gambling. All those things are haram, and Allah does not want you to fall into those things. And we'll stop. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, and that every king, he has a pastor. And verily, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's things which are sacred, or his pasture, so to speak, is that which he holds sacred, those things which he has prohibited you from, meaning staying away from the haram and doing the halal. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, So the Prophet ﷺ then said, he said, and verily in the body is a morsel of flesh. A morsel, this means something very small. Sometimes people, when they eat, they say, I, there's only a morsel of food left, meaning a very tiny piece of food. And a morsel, a lot of times, is with meat. So the Prophet ﷺ said, He said, verily in the body is a piece of flesh. If it is healthy, the whole body is healthy. And then he said, And he said, if it is sick, then the whole body is sick. And he said, verily, it's the heart. So what does this mean? That means that your heart is the most important part of your iman. And iman in Islam is made of three things. Your iman is made of three things. First, your iman, it has to do with deeds of the heart. Actions of the heart, meaning that when you tawak Allah, Allah, when you trust in Allah, that's a part of the deeds of your heart. Because no one can see that. That's in your heart. When you believe in Allah and you pray, and in your heart you have uh, khushur in your prayer, humility, you're humbling yourself before Allah. No one can see you, uh, humility. Khashur, we don't know what it looks like. That's in your heart. And Allah knows it. And if you feel sadness and you give that to Allah, meaning that you you uh, put your trust in Allah, your tawakkul on Allah, you trust in Allah, that's in the heart. When you have taqwa, taqwa, the asal of your taqwa is in your heart. It's in your heart. No one can see it. When you fear Allah, when you... Stay away from the haram because you want to please Allah. Because you're fearful of Allah's punishment. All of that's in your heart. That's a part of Iman. So a part of Iman is the heart. The asal of Iman is in the heart. Also, a part of your Iman is the actions that you do on your limbs. So if, for example, you look at something halal and good, and you do an action of good, you give money, you give charity, that's an action. You did something. And that was a halal in good action. You'll get rewarded from the law. And that's a part of your iman. That's a part of iman because it was action. When you pray to a law, that's a part of iman outward. Because when you do salat and everything, you do your movements, that's physical actions. If you smile at someone for the sake of a law as a nice deed, then that's a part of action. If you remove something that's harmful in the road, like a, a rock or a thorn 
or something that could pop someone's tire on their bicycle or on their car or they could stick in their foot a piece of glass or something. If you move it out of the street and throw it in the garbage for the sake of a law, you, you're going to get edgier for that. And that's a part of Iman. That's a part of the physical. Also a part of Iman is uh, what's on your tongue. If you speak good things, if you compliment someone, you say, oh, so-and-so is nice, you speak good about them. That's a part of Iman. If you say the Shahada on your tongue, that's a part of Iman. If you speak... Uh, good to your mom, you, you're obedient to your mom and you speak good to her. That's a part of Iman on your tongue. When you say good things on your tongue, that's a part of Iman and it makes your Iman higher. And it's a part of Iman. So Iman is three. It has to do with the heart. It has to do with actions you do. And it has to do with what's on your tongue. Everybody's clear. All of that's a part of Iman. And so... The Prophet Sallallahu talked about here in this hadith showing us the most important part of Iman. The most important part of the body for the mu'min is what? The what? The heart. Mumtaz. Allah wa hiya qalb. The Prophet Sallallahu said, it's the heart. Some of the benefits that we get from this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is uh, one of the things that's very important is that this hadith shows us that halal things are very clear. You will know something is halal and you'll feel good when you do halal. When you do something halal, you eat halal food. You, If you get a job, you get halal money. You don't get it from haram things. You don't sell drugs. You don't do bad stuff and get the money. But instead you do good things that Allah is pleased with. It's clear. Halal is clear. And then also the haram is clear. What is the opposite of that is clear. You, you know it's haram to watch bad things on the, on the television. You know it's haram to steal from people. You know it's haram to cuss at people. You know it's haram to backbite people, to speak behind their backs and say bad things about them. All of that is haram. We know that. That's clear. Uh, this hadith also shows us to stay away from the haram. To stay away from those bad things. Because the Prophet ﷺ in the hadith was telling us about to stay away from the haram. And that the halal is clear and the haram is clear. And between it is, is doubtful things. Also this hadith shows us that to avoid those doubtful matters. The things that were not clear if it's halal or haram. And that could mean with uh, things that have to do with your aqidah even, you know, with what you believe in your iman, and that can also have to do with uh, staying away from things that have to do with actions that are doubtful, or, or things that you say in your tongue that are doubtful. So all of that, you want to stay away from anything which is going to cause you to be doubtful in your iman, and that you're not sure if it's halal or haram. This hadith also shows us the importance of being humble. Wara. You know, having of being humble and not being arrogant and thinking that you're better than people, but instead of being humble. This hadith also shows us the importance of learning ilm, of talib al ilm, of seeking knowledge. Why? Because the one who seeks knowledge, they know better what is halal and what is haram. And they know better about what is doubtful. So the more knowledge you gain, then you know. You know, you can tell other people. When they ask you, is that halal? You will know because you studied it, because you have knowledge. You did Talib al ilm you know Quran, and you know from the Sunnah, and you know what the Salaf of this Ummah, what they said. So these things will help you with the halal and the haram. And that comes from Talib al ilm The Prophet ﷺ said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives him understanding of the religion. If Allah wants good for you, He's going to increase you in ilm. He's going to give you, give you knowledge of the Quran and the meaning of the Quran. He's going to give you knowledge of the Sunnah and the meaning of the Sunnah. So that shows Allah wants good for a person when He increases His knowledge. Some people may stay the same. They don't learn in anything in their religion. They stay the same in their, their, their deen. For 20 years, 10 years, I know some people, they don't know 
hardly anything about their Islam any more than they did when they first became Muslim. They stay at the same level. Why? That's a sign that Allah is not favoring them, not giving them that benefit, opening up the khair for them. Because they're not making an effort. That's why you always want to make an effort and read and increase your knowledge about Islam because that will teach you the, the halal and the haram. Another benefit of this hadith, this hadith shows us to be, to do those actions which are safest. If you have dip, different opinions about an issue, that sometimes it's better to do which is the safest, which the scholars agree upon. Sometimes that's the best way to do it, to stay with the safest path of doing the halal. Another benefit of this uh, hadith is... This hadith also shows us the importance of taking care of your heart. Meaning not just with the food that you eat, and not just by exercise, but doing those things like uh, doing the halal things. This helps your heart. When you read, like for example, when you're reading the sirah of the Prophet ﷺ, his autobiography, sometimes that makes you feel good, right? Right? It helps your iman. Sometimes if you're reading Quran and if you know the meaning of the ayat, this helps your iman because you feel good about it. Those things help your iman and they are like a, a guardian. They protect your heart. So knowledge and doing and seeking knowledge helps protect your heart from the bad things. Staying away from the haram helps you protect your heart. Another benefit of this hadith is that this hadith shows us that your heart is the main part of your actions, the main source of your actions. So, if you see, for example, a woman, she doesn't wear hijab. This shows that in her iman, I mean, if she's a Muslim woman and she knows about the hijab, this means that her iman is weak. Her iman is weak. Why? Because outwardly she's not showing her iman. So that shows that if her outside is weak a little bit, it shows that her inside is weak. Her iman is weak. If you see somebody, he always shaves his beard. That shows, and he's a Muslim man and he knows that. Then that shows either he doesn't know or he has some weakness in his iman. His iman is a little low because he's not doing what he's supposed to do. Or if you see someone, they're not uh, praying their sunnahs or whatever the case may be. The outward is a reflection of the inward. Or if you see someone and they're doing a lot of the good things and you see on the outward, then maybe that's a sign that their inward is good too. It doesn't always mean the case. Some people are lying. They're tricking the people. They're doing a lot of bad things, but their outward looks good. This is a very negative thing. But in general, the outward reflects the inward. So if you're doing good stuff outwardly, then probably inside you have a lot of good too. Your iman. Now... If the Muslims are handicapped, what about it? And they're handicapped? Yeah. Yeah, if someone is handicapped, meaning that they don't, uh, or if they don't know, because the Prophet said, He said, the pin is lifted on three. So if someone is knocked out, or someone is, they lost their mind, they have some mental deficiency, or they are, as we say, crazy, or uh, that they're mentally deficient, then they're not responsible, they're not held responsible. Because they don't know. At that time, hopefully they get better, but it's like that they're sick or something. So then they are not responsible for the actions that they do and the mistakes that they make if their mind is not all the way uh, together and healthy. And those are just some of the benefits of this hadith, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good 
وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم